Oh, it's you. You're gonna get me in trouble, Dante. Someone could hear me. I wish someone wanted to hear me. Other than you. Okay. <laughs> I know I'm not supposed to love music. No music. No music. <laughs> but my great-grandma Coco's father was the greatest musician of all time. Papa. Ernesto de la Cruz. One day, he left with his guitar and never returned. No, my family thinks music is a curse. Great-great-grandfather, none of them understand me. I'm supposed to play music. All right, who's in there? I'm sorry. <gasps> What's going on? I'm just dreaming. Do you mind? <gasps> ah! Welcome to the land of the dead. Dr. Queen up! You gotta stay with me, boy. This isn't a dream, then. You're all really out there. Agents at the Department of Family Reunions are available to assist you. Please be on the lookout for a living boy. Miguel, you're here. We're your family, mijo. I know your great-great-grandpa. Mm. I'll get you to him. What are you doing? I'm walking like a skeleton. No, skeletons don't walk like that. It's how you walk. No, I don't. When there's no one left in the living world who remembers you, you disappear from this world. But you can change that. We gotta find my cricket grandpa. You gotta do it by sunrise. What happens at sunrise? You'll be stuck here forever. What? Ugh. I'm a big fan. <laughs> Forget how much your family loves you. It's almost sunrise. One cannot deny who one is meant to be. Ah! <laughs> it's you! I am terribly allergic. But Dante doesn't have any hair. And I don't have a nose. And yet, here we are. It's you! Good morning, everyone. Who among of you here watched that movie already? That movie got my attention because my children loved to watch it. And you know, when kids love a certain movie, they would watch it over and over again until eternity. So there was one time I sat with them and watched with them that movie. But something there got my attention. The theological premise about afterlife. Because... That movie presents life like this. A person who is living dies. When he dies, he leaves the land of the living and he goes to the land of the dead. Okay? His existence in the land of the dead is dependent on the remembering of those who were in the land of the living. So for example, I died and then I am now transferred to the land of the dead. Now, I would exist in the land of the dead so long that I am remembered by the living ones. If they would forget me, then I would vanish to eternity. So that's the theological premise of this movie. But that's not something, what is this, consistent with the scriptures. Because the Bible doesn't teach us that way, that there is life after death and then it is based on the remembering of those who were living. It is not like that, okay? But there is one thing that really gives us, rather, there is one thing in that movie that gives us a, 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 what is this, something that we need to take note, okay, for this morning. It poses us a reality that human beings forget. When a person dies, he is transferred to the land of the living according to that movie. And when he is forgotten by those living, he is going to vanish to eternity. That poses a reality that you and I, we forget. Who among of you here experienced this? Next slide, please. You were looking for your key, the key of your car or motorcycle, and you, would, you were already panicking because you cannot find it inside your pocket or, pocket or you did not find it here in your waist hanging and you went to your cabinet and you look for it and still it's not there and you went to your car it's just hanging on the door did you experience that and i probably i believe if you didn't experience that kind of situation probably experience this 
You were wearing your eyeglasses and then you started looking for it around. And you began asking people, have you seen my eyeglasses? And it's there in your eyes. That's a reality that we forget, right? That is why from time to time, whenever I walk somewhere there and then, Pastor, you are here. And I say, hi, you are here also. But back in my mind, I am asking the question, who is this guy, Lord? Please let me remember before I embarrass him. Because I easily forget. That's a truth that you and I experience. The worst is this. Look at this picture. That old man saying, getting old isn't so bad except for a little forgetfulness. But the problem in that picture is that he forgot to wear his clothes. Diba? <laughs> but these pictures, they pose a reality that we forget. And forgetfulness is only taking place, not only taking place in our time today, but even in those days when the Israelites were brought by God out of Egypt to travel to the promised land. They were forgetting many things. And that is why when Moses wrote the book of Deuteronomy, he had to remind them about remembering the Lord or not forgetting God. Because human as we are, we forget. That's a sad reality. Now, the senior ones would say, this is a senior moment. But take note of this. Senior moment does not only happen to the seniors. It happens even to the young ones. Right? Kaya nga may bata, pabilhin mo ng toyo. Pag uwi sa bahay, suka ang dala. Why does that happen? Because the person forgot. It's just like that. And so because we forget, it also gives us the necessity of being reminded. We need to be reminded. And that is why today, we would be reminded from the word of the Lord from Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 11 to 20. Let's look at that. I'll read from the NASB. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 11 to 20. So it says here, Beware that you do not forget the Lord, your God, by not keeping His commandments and His ordinances and His statutes, which I am commanding you today. Otherwise, when you have eaten and are satisfied and have built a good houses and lived in them, and when your herds or herds and your flocks multiply, and your silver and gold multiply, and all that have multiplies, then your heart will become proud, and you will forget your Lord, the Lord your God, who brought you out from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. He led you through the great and terrible wilderness with its fiery serpents and scorpions and thirsty ground where there was no water. He brought you water. Out of the rock of flint in the wilderness, he fed you manna, which your fathers did not know, that he might humble you and that he might test you to do good for you, for, for you in the end. Otherwise, you may say in your heart, my power and the strength of my hand made me this wealth. But you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is who he is giving you your, your strength and wealth that he may confirm his covenant which you swore to your fathers as it is today. It shall come about if you ever forget the Lord your God and go after other gods and serve them and worship them, I testify against you today that you will surely perish. Like the nations that the Lord makes to perish before you, so you shall perish because you would not listen to the voice of the Lord your God. May the good Lord bless the reading of his words. As I have studied this part of the scriptures, I notice that within these few verses, starting with verse 11 to verse 20, the author made it very sure to inculcate to his readers what he wanted to convey. And he repeatedly mentioned the statement that you will not, do not forget your God or remember your Lord in a positive sense. So when you look at these verses, this thought is repeatedly mentioned. Why? Because he wants his readers to take note of this thing. It is very significant. Back then, God used Moses to bring the Israelites from the land of Egypt out of it, going to the promised land. They were not there yet. They were traveling to the promised land. And before conquering the land, the Lord reminded them already because there are possibilities that he saw that would take place when they are there 
if they are not reminded. So the Lord reminded them while they were journeying to the promised land. And these were the reminders. These were like warnings at the same time to them. Okay? The first warning that I have found in this passage that we read is this. Warning against the danger of disobedience. Take note of the statement in red, uh, what is this, colored letters. Beware that you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping His commandments, His statutes, His ordinances. You need to keep it while they were traveling from the land of Egypt to the promised land. They were reminded about this. And you know what? They still disobeyed. They disobeyed. But take note, it has something to do with not forgetting the Lord. Take note of that. The next thing is this. The next warning that was given to them is this. A warning against the danger of pride or self-sufficiency. That while they were traveling, God already was looking at the possibility of forgetting that when they are already occupying the land, when they plant crops, when they raise herds, when their money is multiplied already, when their wealth is doubled, there is a big possibility that they would forget the one who gave those things to them. And they would feel self-sufficient. And they would feel the pride. And that instead of attributing it to the Lord, saying, Lord, thank you for these blessings, they would begin thinking, this is all my work. I did all of this. I acquired these things because I am a gifted person. I planted it so well. I studied so well. That is why. And so God saw that already, and He had to warn them while they were still traveling to the promised land. A few years ago, Dr. Ben, I don't know if he's here this morning, he, he went to Australia, and coming back here, he shared to us what he saw there, a very sad news that he brought to us. What was about, uh, it was about the church, churches there that were closed already. Before, it, they were churches, and now they were turned to a warehouse, or they were just closed because, not because they were transferring to another place to find something bigger that can accommodate them, but they were, they were not, not there anymore because there were no longer people coming to church. And so according to Dr. Ben, sabi niya, ang dami ng churches nagko-close. Wala na. And when he tried to find out some reasons for that, he interviewed some people, and the common answer given to him was this. We have our cars, we have houses, we even have private plane. We have our own yacht. Why do we need God? When there is too much or when there is so much abundance in life, there is a tendency that a person would forget the God in his life. That is why when I pondered on this matter, I said, Lord, thank you. Thank you for giving us from allowing us from time to time to go through the difficulties in life because Difficulties in life would really make us remember you. How many of us here would find ourselves kneeling, closing our eyes and folding our hands before the presence of God when there is a heavy situation that we are going through? Many, I believe. So that's a reality. That's why when the Israelites were walking out of the land of Egypt, traveling to the promised land, and while they were in the road, God was bringing them to the land flowing with milk and honey. And before they possessed the land, He reminded them that, Hey, hey, take note of this. you got to be aware of this. There is, there is a danger waiting for you there if you would forget the Lord. If you would forget me, if you won't remember me, you are really in great danger because pride is going to get into your hearts. Another warning that was given to them is this. The danger of infidelity. Infidelity. They came from the land of Egypt, and there were several gods and goddesses in that land. Pili ka lang ang dami. Siguro lesser than the Hindu belief, but there were a lot of gods and goddesses in Egypt. And they were traveling in the wilderness to the promised land. In the promised land, it was occupied by Canaanites. And this group of people, they also have their own gods and goddesses. So imagine this. They came out of the land that was filled by gods and goddesses of the pagans, and they are proceeding to a land also infested by gods and goddesses of pagans. And so God had to warn them, warning, warning, warning. Take note of this, because if you forget your Lord, then you would run after other gods. The danger of infidelity. 
Because as far as God is concerned, He is not asking from us priority, but He is asking exclusivity. I mentioned that before already. Priority could be, Lord, I worship you this morning because it's Sunday. Tomorrow, I'll worship another God. It should not be like that. Exclusivity. Once you say, I pay allegiance to you, Lord, then you should never pay allegiance to other, other gods and goddesses because you already have set yourself to the Lord. You sanctified yourself to the Lord. So God is not demanding priority, but He is demanding exclusivity from us. Now take note of this, that. These three warnings, the warning about disobedience, the warning about the danger of infidelity, and the warning about the danger of pride and self-sufficiency. These were all mentioned in the passage. Take note. They were all mentioned directly connected to the forgetting of the Lord's statement. Have you not noticed that? They are all mentioned, connected directly to the statement, forgetting the Lord. In other words, a person who disobeys often is a person who's staying away or drifting away from the very presence of God because in his mind and in his heart, he begins to forget his God. Meaning to say, when pride gets into our hearts, it is the moment when we are drifting away from remembering our Lord. Because if you remember him, you remember what he did in the past, and you would say, this is not because of my work. This is because of you. So when you think about these three dangers given to them as a warning, they were all directly connected to that statement, forgetting the Lord. Kaya nga sa mag-asawa, kung very godly yung spouse mo, wag kang mag-alala. Kasi habang naaalala niya si Lord, faithful din yan sa'yo. But if that person begins to forget and drift from the Lord, hmm, blink, blink, take note of the warning sign. That's reality. They easily forgot. When you go to the history of Israel, despite these warnings, they failed. They disobeyed. They went and ran after other gods. They took pride on their accomplishments. They failed. But God is gracious. He redeems over and over again. And because of that, God set many symbolisms in the lives of the Israelites. Kaya nga, lang symbols. You go to the book of Revelation, there were a lot of symbols even inside the temple. There is the, the laver or the, where, where they could wash their hands. There is the candle stand. There are several symbols. What do they stand for? They are reminding the Israelites about who God is in their existence. And that is why also they have several feasts and daming fiesta ng Israel. Sa Sambuanga, meron tayong fiesta pilar. ba? Kahit hindi ka Catholic, nag enjoy ka rin sa fiesta pilar kasi holiday yun. Tapos may sale pa. So we enjoy. But if you look at the biblical accounts, Israelites had a lot of feasts. And what was the purpose? The purpose of those feasts was just for them to remember what God did in their lives. That is why look at this picture. I got it from PrayForZion.org. And uh, you can see there that the months that they follow in the Jewish or Hebrew calendar is different from the Gregorian calendar that we follow today. So if you say month of Nisan, a portion of it falls in the month of March and a portion falls in the month of April. That is why when they celebrate the Passover or the Pesach, when they celebrate the Passover, sometimes it falls on the last part of March or in the first week of April. Okay? And then a few months later, after another month, there would be another feast. When they celebrate the feast, they remember their God. And then after a few months, there would be another feast. When they celebrate the feast, they would remember their God. And then they would celebrate another feast, and then they would remember their God. That is the reason why they had a lot of, they had a lot of feasts so that they would be able to recall their God and not forget Him. I remember a song of the Bee Gees many, many decades ago. Don't forget to remember me. You know that song? Uh, some of you are smiling. Maybe you heard that song or you love that song. 
But those ones that are not smiling, maybe, what are you singing, Pastor? I do not know that song. Don't forget to remember me. If you bring that statement within this message today from the perspective of God, I think that's going to give us a very concrete statement about what we are talking about this morning. Don't forget to remember your God. And that's the message that he was giving to the Israelites. But reality is that we forget. So how could we be helped so that we will not forget? We need reminders, right? Kaya nga, thankful ako sa technology ngayon na merong reminders sa cellphone. Uh, okay, um, magbiblink na lang, mag alarm sa 10 minutes before the event. There is a Thanksgiving in this place, you are invited to go there. Or there is a birthday celebration, you are invited to go there. There is a funeral service, you are invited to go there. You are going to speak there. So I have a lot of reminders in my phone. If you look at my calendar, a lot of dots. Meaning to say each day has a lot of reminders. And that helps us a lot because we easily forget. So how can we be helped as far as our relationship with God is concerned? How can we be helped so that we would never forget? I have some suggestions here, okay? And I am hoping that you would consider these suggestions. Number one is this. Never miss a Sunday worship. From Sunday to Sunday, we come here, listen to the Word, worship God with our singing, thank Him with our voices, honor Him with our lives. But when we hear the preaching, we are reminded of who God is and what He is doing in our lives and how are we to behave as His children, right? And you know, the Sunday worship, this is not just a human institution, I believe. This is something that God has given to us so that we would be reminded of what He has done. His way of reminding every one of us so that we will not forget Him. Another suggestion is this. Take notice of the cross. You know, in a Christian country, in Zamboanga City, wherein Christianity is really very prevalent, and you can see many crosses around. When you see a cross, I suggest you begin recalling your God. We have a big cross there outside. When you pass by Zikaek, I hope you would remember your God because you see the cross. When you pass by a cemetery, I hope you would remember your God because there is a cross. When you pass by a Catholic church, I hope you would remember your God because there is a cross. In Manila, when I take a taxi, I ko talaga yan na Roman Catholic yung driver kasi every time na dumadaan niya ng church, dahan siya ng cemetery. There's no problem with the sign of the cross. If the reason why you do that is you remember your God or you respect and honor Him, the problem, it becomes a problem if you use it as an amulet that when there is something bad that is about to take place and you want to drive it away and immediately you would say, eh kahit sampung beses ka pa maganon, it won't make anything. It won't do anything rather. So it becomes wrong if you think that it's like an amulet, that there is power when you do the sign of the cross. Because the real power actually is not on the cross. The real power is on the one who died on the cross. So when you see a cross, don't remember the cross for itself, but remember the one who died in the cross. Remember your God. Another suggestion is this. Stick verses on your walls or doors. Diba? There might be times when you stick, like uh, stick the, some, a passage in the book of Psalm. What is a man that you are mindful of him? The son of man that you care for him. And one day you are so down and you feel that nobody cares for you. And then suddenly you look at the wall and it's there written. It reminds you of who your God is and what God feels about you. Then you are comforted. So it's going to be a very wonderful thing. If you put verses on your wall, on your office, on your door, maybe in your car is a tiny sticker. Just be sure you won't read it while you are driving or else you would end up with the Lord very soon. So, ganun lang. It's a good reminder for us. Another suggestion is this. Avail an ictus sign. You know what an ictus sign? The fish, fish shape. Um, many Christians put this at the back of their car. Okay? It's ictus. It's called ictus 
Ichthus is a uh, what is this? An acronym of Greek letters. The I there represents Yesu, okay? The X there represents Christo. The TH represents Theos, okay? The U and S represent Uios, okay? So Yesu Christo Theos Uios Ho Uios. Meaning to say in English, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Got it? So when you see a fish sign behind a car and when you are driving your motorcycle, you would see it, it tells you that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So it's a good reminder for all of us. Another suggestion is this. Be sensitive with the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. He is there in you. Be sensitive. Obey Him. Follow Him. Another one is this. Consult the Word regularly. Okay? Don't get me wrong. We're not doing this so that we could become good. Okay? We're doing this because God gave all these things to us so that we would remember Him. Another one is this. Make use of special moments like Christmas. Diba? Pag mag-celebrate ka ng Christmas, remember the Lord your God. Take some time to read the story of the Lord Jesus Christ's birth. Or, Whenever you celebrate your birthday, every one of us celebrates birthday. Why do you celebrate your birthday? Because you invite your friends. <laughs> but that could be one of the reasons. But there is a greater purpose why you celebrate birthday, I believe. It is a moment that you can pose for a moment in the midst of a busy world. You can pose for a moment and begin to reflect in the past 12 months. And on your birthday, you would be able to say, Lord, thank you. You are faithful. I am still here, breathing. You developed me to become the person that you desired for me to be. I have challenges, I have problems, but I am still here, alive and kicking. Thank you for my birthday. Because that tells you, God has been faithful in the past 12 months. Another thing is this. Choose to be with godly peeps. Stay with godly people. Somebody said, if you want to be faithful, walk with the faithful. You, you don't talk like this. You know, bro, I really praise God for the challenges that I face in life. You won't talk to a person who do not have a same belief with you like that. Diba? When Example, you work in an office where everybody is a heathen. You don't... Uh, you don't know their faith, and, but you know that they, they do not have the faith like yours. You go to them and you don't talk to them. You know the Lord is so powerful. Well, if you can, praise God. But naturally and ordinarily and regularly, we don't do that. Because we only talk about the goodness of God whenever we're, we're with our brethren. But being with the brethren would make us be reminded about who God is. And when we are reminded... Go to the pips who do not have the same faith with you and tell them about that the reminders that you have uh, recalled when you were with your brethren. That is why whenever I encounter a person who would tell me, Pastor, I would go to this country next month. I would go to this country to work next, uh, in these this coming two months. And then the first advice that I give is this. Look for a church. Look for a church. Because if you are immersed in the world and there is no accountability and there are no faithful people, there are no godly people around you, the tendency is you would drift from your beliefs and you'll forget your God. But that's why usually I advise it that way. I'm going to this country, find a church. After you found your house, the place that you would stay, find a church. And based on experience, because they go and fly and they still connect with me. When I ask them, have you found a church? Are you having fellowship? Those people that are connected to the church in a fellowship, they are still growing in their faith. But those individuals who did not are having prob problem often. Maybe there are some that are exceptional when it comes to their relationship with God. But reality is that there are many of them who don't find fellowship, find it so difficult living their Christian life in the community. The importance of fellowship. And lastly, 
take note of this. It's blank because there are many more other things that you can use to remind you about your God. I am hoping and I'm praying that in this existence that we have, we only have one life. And I pray that in our existence, we would all live our lives day to day, remembering the Lord of all, the faithful one, the redeemer, the lover of your soul. So if I'm going to summarize this message today in one statement, I would like to borrow the line of the Bidzis. Don't forget to remember your God. Because as far as He is concerned, He will never forget any one of you. How do you find it when the Scripture describes how God perceives us that He can even number the hair on your head? That He knows every single cell in your body? That God who can name the stars and would never miss one will never miss any person in this church. Never forget him because he will never forget you. The Lord bless us all and good morning.